No communion in the hand. No offense to the Lord. No profanation. No sacrilege. I want to bear witness to the real presence of Christ in the Holy Eucharist. And because of this infinite gift that God has given us, I need to reprove the reception of the consecrated host in the hand. It seems that the world is forgetting about the real presence of Christ that only priests can touch with their hands, for it is a privilege that God has granted to those souls consecrated to his service, only to them. In St. Thomas Aquinas, doctor of the Church, tells us, To reverence this holy sacrament, the Holy Eucharist, nothing touches it except what is consecrated, just as the corporal and the chalice are consecrated. So are the consecrated hands of the priests to touch the sacrament. To St. Bridget of Sweden, Jesus said, Look, my daughter, I give five things to my priests, and in the fifth place the privilege of touching with their hands my sacred flesh. Pope John Paul II, in the letter Dominica Sena, touching the sacred species and their distribution with one's own hands, is a privilege of the ordained. Apart from receiving the Lord in the mouth, it is necessary to adore him on one's knees, as St. Pius X says. When receiving Holy Communion, it is necessary to be on one's knees, to have one's head slightly bowed, the eyes modestly turned towards the sacred host, the mouth sufficiently opened, and the tongue slightly out of the mouth, resting on the lower lip. If we study the lives of the saints, we will realize that all of them received the Holy Eucharist on their knees and in their mouths. They knew the greatness of that treasure. In there was their heart. Those were the beautiful times when the Church was holy, when it had holy popes, holy cardinals, holy bishops, holy priests, and holy laymen. The Church of today has much to be desired. The percentage of holiness in it is very low. This modern Church wants to impose the profanation of the Holy Eucharist by forcing the priests to give it in the hand and the laity to commit a sacrilege by receiving it in their hands. It is a profanation on the part of the priest to give this holy sacrament in the hand because in doing so he participates in the sacrilege to the most sacred thing that exists, Emmanuel. God with us in the form of bread. The priest is the one anointed by Christ in the Church, the only human being authorized to consecrate the bread and the wine and responsibly participate the sacrament to the people of God. At the Last Supper, Jesus said to the Apostles, Take and eat, for this is my body. And then he said, do this in memory of me. In other words, Jesus fed them and asked them to do the same. Jesus Christ, being the high priest, personally gave them his body and blood. They were priests anointed by Christ himself, and therefore they could touch the body of Christ, because that was the dignity that Jesus was sharing with them. Let us see clearly that Christ, having so many disciples, did not gather them all together, but instituted this sacrament only with his priests. This is a very important point. Otherwise, anyone could also be a priest and consecrate bread and wine as the body and blood of the Lord. But this is not so. The Holy Eucharist is as sacred as the mother's milk that she gives to her baby directly from her breast to her mouth. She gives it to him lukewarm, fresh, 
from her body. She gives it to him in the midst of that intimacy between mother and child. No mother is pleased to allow another person to handle this milk that is exclusive for her baby. Likewise, Christ gives himself personally from the priest to the mouth of the one who with his tongue professes his faith in him. He cannot deliver it into the hands, for the hands are the same as the hands of the executioners who mistreated him, the whips that flagellated him, the crown of thorns that tortured his head, and the cross that was his deathbed. Our hands become instruments of torture when, as laymen, we touch the sacred scourged flesh of Christ. Jesus does not want to be received in the hand. This is something that the Lord has asked me for many years and that I faithfully observe and will do unto death. And I prefer to die than to receive Jesus in the hand because for me it is the greatest sacrilege. This reminds me a lot of the conviction of the Maccabees when they were tempted to eat pork. They did not do it, because due to their faith, they offended God. They preferred to be martyred than to disobey the inner command. I will testify how I was taught to receive Holy Communion only in the mouth and also on my knees. In the first years of my Catholic faith, I received the Lord in my hand. Although the Spirit of God spoke to me in my interior and always asked me to receive Him in my mouth, one day that voice was very strong in my heart, and I even doubted that it was necessary to receive the Lord that way, since I felt ashamed to do so, because few people did it. Then I disobeyed as usual, and at the moment before the priest placed the host in my hand, the Lord gave me a vision of the wound in his hand on my right hand. This made me feel guilty, and I began to reflect on it. From that moment on, I decided not only to receive him on my tongue, but also on my knees. I began to leave the word of God in my heart, Malachi chapter 3, verse 2. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like full of soap. I firmly believe that I am in the presence of the living and real Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. That is why I cannot remain standing much less would I dare to receive him in my hand. That love for Jesus, God truly present in the Eucharist, has led me to organize groups of adoration of the Blessed Sacrament of the altar. You can adore with me by watching videos of adoration on my channel, The Work of God. St. Paul teaches us that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Philippians 2, verses 10 to 11. Let's look then how before the Holy Eucharist we are not only before the name of Jesus, but before the real presence of the Lord. It is truly God, Emmanuel, God, whom we are. For all that I have said before, we are now in the new post-pandemic church, which opens its doors to invite the faithful to profane the Holy Eucharist by receiving it in their hands. Here, the most sacred thing we have is exposed to the sacrilege approved by the ecclesiastical hierarchy. Do you believe, brothers and sisters, that I am going to participate in this? No, I will not. I cannot obey the governments of the world who have imposed this burden on the Church, nor can I be forced by the Church 
to commit this sin. I do not feel comfortable accepting new instructions that take me away from the true faith. Dear Brother Priest, do you want to be faithful to Christ or to men? Do you want the church to be open and in return you give the Eucharist in the hand? Do you want to obey your superiors more than obey God? Dear Brother Priests, meditate on this word of Jesus, Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine or they will trample them underfoot in turn and mold you. The holiest thing that exists, Christ himself, cannot be despised, being given in the hand. What is the secretion? What is sacrilege? The priest must believe that Christ is really in his hands, and without fear of contamination by a virus, or without fear of contradicting the temporal authorities of the world. He must obey Christ, not men. Whatever the cost, this is fidelity to Christ. Dear lay brother or sister, do you believe that Jesus is alive in the Holy Eucharist? Do not profane him by receiving him in your hand. Do not offend him. Do not commit the greatest possible sacrilege. You receive more from Christ by respecting him than by profaning him. Either you should receive him in your mouth, or better still, do not receive him. If in your life you have received Jesus already in the Holy Eucharist, remember that only one drop of his blood is enough to obtain your salvation and that of all humanity. Do not trample on the blood of our Savior. If you always receive him in your hand, ask him for forgiveness, and do not do it again. If you usually receive him in your mouth, do not go to receive him in your hand. It is a sin. Do not profane the body of Christ. Do not be part of this global sacrilege. Remember the words of St. Paul, in the first of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 29. For he who without discernment eats and drinks the body and blood of the Lord, eats and drinks his own condemnation. In the description of this video, I leave you a link to a translation of a document that reveals the promises of Jesus to all those who receive him in their mouths and not in their hands. This message was given to Catalina Rivas, a stigmatized seer in the Book of the Passion, with imprimatur from Monsignor René Fernández, Archbishop of Cochabamba, Bolivia. The Church that forces the faithful to receive Holy Communion in the hand is not the Church of Christ. Within it, we will find many priests faithful to Christ, who will give us Holy Communion in the mouth, as it should be, also kneeling if we really believe in the presence of the Lord. God bless you. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. Subscribe to our channel, The Work of God. Share this message and leave your comments. God bless you.